Yes, folks, Nintendo has successfully shut down Yuzu, or at least gotten Yuzu to shut down in a massive settlement that, no, doesn't really set legal precedent, just appears to enforce current legal precedent. Look, I am not a lawyer. We need to get this out of the way right now. I am in no way a lawyer. None of this is legal advice. And no, even lawyers do not know what would have happened if this case would have went to trial, because regardless of how other pieces of software have been handled in a trial. New precedents could have potentially been set for the positive or negative, depending on which side of the fence you're on. But this case did not go to trial as there was a agreed upon settlement. Now, again, the settlement's not technically final. We are in the last stage before it becomes final from my understanding. And while I did reach out to a lawyer that does deal with the MCA and made very compelling statements on why this was a real case. I just want to kind of dive a little bit into the actual legal document and what it says and what points were told to me about where this actually has a lot of legal basis. Like Nintendo wasn't crazy and out of their mind for what they were doing, even though a lot of people don't like it. And then we're going to get into the official statement put out by Yuzu themselves, how part of the statement is a little bit of BS in my opinion. However, to remember, uh, they are obviously under some legal obligations at the moment. So take that for what you will. Let's go ahead and dive into this legal document that we have our hands on here. I will provide a link to this down below. Uh, so you're going to see that it says exhibit a, and we're not going to go through this entire document because a lot of it's very repetitive, but the beginning basically has the, the first page or two has all the inf relevant information we need. So you can see this was happening in the district of Rhode Island. Tropic Haze LLC are the makers of Citra and Yuzu though. This was just for the Yuzu emulator. All right. So this came before the court on parties joint motion for entry of final judgment. Joint motion means that they came to a settlement. All right. So Nintendo America Inc. markets and distributes electronic video games and consoles. And they're saying that these are findings of fact, of course. You know, fact in the letter of the law is a little bit different than fact in a settlement. Again, settlements do not create law. They're just a way to avoid worrying about creating law and dealing with massive lawyer fees. Anyways, so the Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch video games contain technological measures that effectively control access to copyrighted works and protect rights of copyrighted owners, including Nintendo, the technological measures. Nintendo owns valid copyrights in works protected by the technological measures, including its video games and the Nintendo Switch operating system. Yuzu, a video game emulator, circumvents the technological measures and allows for the play of encrypted Nintendo Switch games on devices other than Nintendo Switch. For example, Yuzu executes code that decrypts Nintendo Switch video games, including component files, immediately before and during runtime using unauthorized copies of Nintendo Switch cryptographic keys. Yuzu is primarily designed to circumvent and play Nintendo Switch games in ordinary course of its operation with those games, user requires Nintendo Switch's proprietary cryptographic keys to gain access to and play Nintendo Switch games. Developing or distributing software, including Yuzu, that in its ordinary course functions only when cryptographic keys are integrated without authorization, violates Digital Millennial Copyright Act DMCA prohibition on trafficking in devices that circumvent effective technological measures because the software is primarily designed for the purpose of circumventing technological measures. And then therefore they're ordered to pay $2.4 million in fees to Nintendo and damages and Yada, yada, yada. Everyone's going to bear the cost of their own lawyers and uh, they have to delete everything, right? Like all the rest of the stuff is just what they have to do, like getting rid of all their copies. They're no longer allowed to, you know, if you go through this, they're no longer allowed to even work on emulators ever again. They're basically making this agreement in the settlement. The settlement is legally binding. So this, you know, them agreeing to this means that, yeah, they cannot be involved in any other emulation development in the future uh, for against Nintendo anyways. So you know, it, it, it's pretty much a, hey, uh, we're dipping out and we are just not, we're going to give in to everything Nintendo said. The only thing that it really isn't included in here uh, is anything to do with, you know, modifying hardware and stuff like that. One, there's already case law that says you're allowed to do that and you're allowed to make legal backups of your games. So that is 
you know, not something that you know Nintendo was trying to get to get illegal, but that's not in this settlement. And to be fair, even if it was, it still wouldn't actually be legally binding. It wouldn't circumvent currently existing case law. Now, when we talk about all of this, the biggest thing, and remember, a lot of this is just my opinions. I'm not a lawyer, but in talking to a lawyer that dealt with it, that dealt deals with DMCA and copyright with software, uh, there definitely was a case here for Nintendo, and really a case for all of these companies especially now ones that are using all these protections because when you buy a, a physical copy or you buy a digital copy, you're buying a license and there is protections around being able to make backups. The thing about the protection around the backups is Nintendo actually has a legal argument that just because you're allowed to legally make a digital backup of whatever that thing is, doesn't give you the right to actually play that thing on anything other than the original intended hardware because they don't, you don't own the copyright. And in order to get around that, you have to actually decrypt, which is in DMCA law that you cannot decrypt encrypted copyrighted work. So while there are exceptions to these rules, the exceptions are not really around whether or not it's legal to decrypt encrypted copyrighted work. And even though Yuzu might not execute it themselves, they might not provide it by default with their emulator, they do have to use prod keys and other things in order to properly decrypt and run these files. So it's interesting because obviously we had this legal case all the way back in like 2000 with Sony, where yes, actually emulators can exist, but that was also back before all these encryption keys were going on. And it, it really just proved that it's illegal for an emulator to exist in the way that that emulator existed back then. You know, reverse engineering uh, systems and stuff like that with your own custom code, that sort of stuff is allowed. But is it allowed to happen if in the course of doing that, you still require the use of literal copyrighted owned encryption files by Nintendo? That is a very legally gray area, and you definitely can't decrypt those files because that is definitely a DMCA violation. So the, it, it's very fascinating the case Nintendo was making. And really, my only statement here is I'm kind of surprised Nintendo didn't just do this like sooner. Uh, on top of that, the legal argument here, or at least the public statement from Yuzu is, I'm just going to say, not the greatest and definitely goes against things that you can find publicly about this company. But let's go ahead and look at this. You're going to see it's kind of tiny here. We're going to blow her up uh, so you can get a full look here. This is their statement. It says, hello, Yuzuers and Citra fans. We write today to inform you that Yuzu and Yuzu's support of Citra are being discontinued effective immediately. Yuzu and its team have always been against piracy. We started the projects in good faith out of passion for Nintendo and its consoles and games, and we're not intending them to cause harm. But we see now that because our projects can circumvent Nintendo's technological protection, again, they're going directly into the, hey, we are circumventing all of their protections around their software, even if we don't provide it directly uh, and allow users to play games outside of authorized hardware, they have led to an extensive piracy. In particular, we have been deeply disappointed when users have used our software to leak game content prior to its release and ruin the experience for legitimate purchases and fans. We have come to the decision that we cannot continue to allow this to occur. Piracy was never our intention, and we believe that piracy of video games on video game consoles should end. Effective today, we will be pulling our code repositories offline, discontinuing our Patreon accounts and Discord servers, and soon shutting down our websites. We hope your actions will be a small step toward ending piracy of all creators' works. Thank you for your years of support and for understanding our decision. And one thing I find funny here is that you can get the emulator even right now, right off their website. Uh, I find this completely fascinating because it's almost like they were giving a final warning to everyone who wants to use their emulator Go get it now because we're not legally required to take it down yet, but we will be taking it down as soon as this judgment goes through and we're forced to. And I think that's hilarious because as someone who runs and has run several traditional websites, it's one click of a button to take that website offline. Uh, and they're just acting like, oh, it's going to be harder and take long. No, no, you're just waiting until you're legally forced to do it. 
uh, because you're giving everyone the ability to still download your emulator. The funny thing, too, about all of this is their statement's entirely full of BS. If you know anything about the founder of user and uh, user and all this stuff, they have publicly made statements on their Discord server, on social media, various other places, advertising piracy. They were very upfront about it, and they even include documents, or did at least, on their website. I haven't double-checked showing people how to access and get, get your hands on keys that are technically illegal to have access to. So, uh, look, these guys knew what they were doing, right? They very clearly were advertising their, their, their thing for piracy in a way that you usually don't see makers of emulators do. Obviously, makers of emulators are well aware the most popular user group are people pirating, but they're not so blatantly obvious about it the way that Yuzu was. And the fact that they're acting like, oh, man, we didn't do anything wrong. This was never our intent. Look, this statement was written by a lawyer. Let's just be honest. They're trying not to ruffle any more of Nintendo's feathers because Nintendo never even went after Citra, even though Citra is also having to use keys and stuff. So you can see how they're like, oh, man, we better take this down as well as a sign of good faith so Nintendo doesn't slap us with another $2.4 million in fines and yada yada. So I just find all of this to be really, really uh, interesting. And again, none of this sets a new precedent. It's more so enforcing currently existing laws in DMCA around copyright protection surrounding software. And look, uh, in the one lawyer I talked to's opinion, it is very shocking Nintendo didn't use these same laws to shut this stuff down much sooner. But at the same point, this only really applies in the United States as well, from my understanding. So like Regenix, the other Nintendo Switch emulator, I'm sorry if I butchered the name, uh, I was informed by some that it, I, I wasn't able to confirm this, but I was informed that they actually originate in Brazil, so they have to be compliant with Brazilian law, and I don't know anything about that law, I barely know US law, and then obviously, you know, this won't apply to emulators, anything made outside of the United States, and even then, it doesn't really apply to anything anyway, because Nintendo was just enforcing current laws, and look, who knows what way would have went in court, but uh, if you guys have watched all the lawyer channels out there, most of them kind of agreed that Nintendo had an extremely strong case here, and it was very unlikely the other side could win, although you never know which way things would actually go in a courtroom setting, and new precedents could be set, new exceptions could be made, etc., etc., etc. But from the looks of it, based on how other software law has gone, Likely Nintendo would have probably won this lawsuit if it would have went to trial. And then you just have the full definitive, you can't make emulators anymore or something like that. So I, I find this to be really quite fascinating. Or at least you can't make emulators that that require the use of, of, of you know, encryption keys and stuff like that. Like that's that's maybe the, the, the caveat there. Not that emulators would be illegal, but ones that have to use encryption keys. Uh, because again, those are not things that they own rights to. Uh, whether they provide them or not, if your software doesn't work without them, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's Nintendo's big argument. So, I don't know, guys. This is going to cause a lot of debate. Please be kind down in the comments. I, you know, I'm not really, like, like, am I happy? Not really. Am I mad? Not really. I don't emulate games, but I, you know, I understand a lot of people that do. I'm not here to tell you what's morally right. I'm just here delivering what the facts were, giving a few opinions, a little context from a lawyer friend of mine, and leaving it at that. So, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's time for us to now turn a new leaf and get ready for some more content later today. I'll catch you guys in the next video.